My name is Ruya. I work at the New Carrollton Branch Library and today I'm going to be talking about ecosystems and the water cycle and showing you how to make your own terrariums. Basically the way I would define a terrarium is it is a collection of organic and inorganic material that works together to create a miniature ecosystem inside a container. It doesn't have to be a closed terrarium, but a closed terrarium is what I'm going to show you guys how to make today. Um, and it has uh, the benefit of creating a very humid environment. Um, the water inside can't escape. Um, so plants that thrive in high humidity, um, like this sedum, um, and this moss, um, they grow really well inside. Um, and the other thing about a terrarium, you really can use a container of any size. I put a chicken skull in here because I was feeling goth the day I made this one. Um, you really can use a container of any size. This is um, just a tiny little maple syrup jar um, and I thought it was really cute. Um, so I just put a couple of rocks and a little bit of moss inside. One moment. Um, and even though it's very small, you can see that the moss is actually still alive. Um, I've had this one growing for months, really. Um, and you can see there's a layer of sand at the bottom for drainage. That's my false bottom and a layer of soil. Um, so what you're going to need is a clear container. Um, it needs to be clear because plants need light in order to produce energy. Um, it doesn't need to be a jar, it could be any kind of clear container. Um, but uh, I like this one because it has a clear top so I can look in um, from above. Um, you are also going to need some soil. I just collected this from my backyard. Um, you're going to need uh, something to scoop the soil. Um, you could use a shovel, I'm just going to use a plastic spoon. Um, some rocks, also collected from my backyard, um, some plants, these are just some clover, um, again, collected from my backyard, uh, and, um, I also have some moss, which does really, really well, um, in terrarium environments, um, and... So a terrarium is very high humidity, um, which means that not every, but not every plant is going to thrive in there. Some, um, like cacti, for instance, need a lot less water um, in order to thrive. Um, but moss is uh, great. It needs a ton of water um, and the amount of sunlight it needs can vary. Um, so I highly suggest starting with moss. And if you're going to go out and collect plants, you definitely don't need to spend money. Um, I got mine from my backyard, but if you don't have a backyard, um, moss is pretty much everywhere. You can get it from the cracks in between sidewalks, um, any kind of pavement that has cracks, you see moss growing in there. Um, if you go to a park, um, that's also a great way to collect um, moss. Um, but I definitely recommend not, if you see like a patch of moss, only collect part of it because um, it is part of the ecosystem. And an ecosystem is just a bunch of organisms, living things, working together, working symbiotically, um, and creating an environment. Um, so I'm going to tell you about how a terrarium is its own little ecosystem and the living things inside and the non-living things, the inorganic things, um, they all work together to create um, an environment that they can live in. Um, so yeah, if you go to a park there are certain laws um, that govern what you can take and what you can't. So you absolutely cannot take anything that was planted intentionally. So no trees, don't go digging up any trees, don't dig up any flowers, but moss is okay because it was not planted intentionally. Um, and the same with clover. I'd recommend um, gathering it from your yard or somebody else's yard, but um, 
it grows everywhere so there aren't really any laws about clover um you're also going to need some rocks um and those are going to go in the bottom of the terrarium like everything else i got it from my backyard um but you can just get them from anywhere there's a bunch of gravel um you really don't need all that many um and you can get them you can buy them from like aquarium supply stores but uh they're expensive and you can just get you know a handful of rocks for free so to start out i'm going to open up this jar and i'm going to put the rocks inside and this is called a false bottom um, and what the false bottom does is it goes underneath the soil and it collects um, the water that drains out from the soil. And this is a really important part of the water cycle that happens in a terrarium. It's just a miniature version of the water cycle that happens in the world um, outside. So the way the water cycle works is that um, water evaporates from large bodies of water like the ocean. Um, it goes up in the air and it gathers in clouds um, and it just keeps evaporating and the clouds get denser and denser. They collect more and more moisture and once they are at capacity, um, once they've reached all the moisture they can hold, the uh, the water starts to come down in the form of rain. And the way that works in a terrarium is there's water in the soil, in the plants, um, and that either uh, drains down to the bottom or it evaporates. And the water that drains down to the bottom also evaporates and it condenses, it collects in little droplets on the side of the terrarium. And uh, once the little droplets get big enough, they'll roll down and they'll water the plants and the soil and the cycle repeats. So we're just going to pour the rocks into the bottom of the terrarium. And you really don't need a lot. Um, and I'm going to kind of, I want there to be like a little hill, a little incline, um, so that I can see um, all of the plants just looking at the front. Um, so I'm just going to arrange the rocks like that and an incline. Um, and then... After you put the rocks in, um, I'm going to put the soil in. I also collected um, a larger rock because I looked, I thought it looked cool. Um, and an acorn cap also because I thought it looked cool. You don't want to put a whole acorn in there because acorns can sprout. Um, and uh, this little guy is not big enough to hold an entire tree. But... Um, I think the acorn cap still looks pretty cool. So now I'm just going to spoon some dirt in there. You don't need a lot. Um, moss especially really doesn't have deep roots. Um, so I'm probably just going to put like less than an inch in there. Enough to cover the rocks. Enough to support the roots of the clover. But I don't want it taking up the whole jar because I want to be able to see inside and appreciate what my terrarium looks like. And some people will say that you need a certain kind of soil um, but really, I've found that potting soil or just soil from outside, especially if you lift up, if you see like a pile of um, leaf litter, just like um, leaves from the fall that have sort of started decomposing, you lift that up and you get the soil from underneath. That's great. Um, that has worked just fine in my experience. So again, I'm arranging it on an incline because I think that will look cool. Um, so it's just like a small layer of rocks, a small layer of dirt, and then I'm going to arrange some of my plants. So I got this moss. 
I'm gonna put it down. Um, I'm also gonna put the rock inside. I'm gonna put the acorn cap inside. Maybe I'll put a little bit more moss over the rock to see if it... Moss doesn't grow well on rocks unless you find a rock that already has moss growing on it. But sometimes if there's like some soil already attached to the moss, because moss really doesn't need soil, much soil to grow, um, you might be able to make it work. And I did find this rock that already had moss growing on it. Um, so I'm going to put it in there, see if anything happens. Um, and then... So, these pieces of clover, um, I actually didn't collect the roots because, um, like I was saying about ecosystems, um, they're all about everything working together. So, if you remove, like, a significant part of that ecosystem, like a whole piece of moss rather than just the little pieces that I took, or a whole clover plant, that could seriously impact it. Like some insects eat those plants and you're removing their food source and then, you know, larger animals eat the insect insects and it ends up impacting the whole thing. Like uh, soils are really important for, I mean, roots are really important for holding soils in place. Um, so if you take a whole plant, including the roots, the soil can go everywhere. Um, and uh, pollute a nearby body of water. Um, but if you just take a little bit, um, plants actually, especially in terrarium environments, because there's so much water and, and it's often pretty warm, um, they actually grow really well. Um, like sometimes if you take a clipping, it's really hard to get the plant to grow just from there. Um, but because terrariums are so fertile, it's actually quite easy to get a plant to sprout roots just from a clipping. So I'm just going to try taking these clippings and sticking them in the soil, and I'm going to see what happens. And here's a little bit of moss that fell on the table. I'm just gonna stick that on the rock. We'll see what happens. Um, and then, so my soil was already pretty moist. I collected it just after a rainfall. So there might be enough water in here already, but just in case, I'm going to spritz it with a couple of spritzes of water um, just to help everything kind of settle down. Um, and if you see that there's a lot of water on the sides um, after you've let the terrarium sit for a long time, um, you might want to open it up and let it everything evaporate for a couple of hours because it might be too moist. Um, and if there's no condensation ever, there's probably not enough water and you need to, you need to spray it a little bit more. Um, so uh, a spray bottle is really nice because it kind of gets everything evenly around um but you don't need to use a spray bottle you can use um like a little uh syrup cup anything with um a little spout you can just you know turn the faucet on really low um and just stick it under the faucet um there aren't really any rules but you don't you don't need a ton of water for a terrarium this size and um if the leaves of the uh, plants, the moss, um, it's a little bit harder to tell, but the clover, it'll start to turn yellow if there's too much water. Um, and the leaves will start to shrivel up if there's not enough water. So it's, it's a lot easier to tell if you have plants with big leaves like this. So now I'm going to close it up. And I'm going to stick it in a sunny windowsill and see how it fares. Terrariums are a great way to watch plants thrive. Um, they're a great way to study nature up close. Um, like if you look at this moss that's growing up the side, I've never seen moss grow this tall out in the wild. It usually grows very, very low to the ground, but this has really 
sprung up a lot, which is so much fun to watch. It's also like a great creative outlet. Um, like the main thing that sets like a terrarium apart from just like a potted plant is that it's really intentionally landscaped to be beautiful. Um, so this is really, it can be, you know, just like one, you can just make one or you can make like a whole hobby out of it. Like people have huge terrarium setups. Um, you can look it up online. Um, I'll share some links. Um, I also really want to talk to you guys about insects. Um, so if you gather your moss from the wild, like I suggest you do, um, you are going to find that you have also collected some insects. Um, and you might think that insects are really gross, um, but they are actually incredibly important um, for uh, helping your um, miniature landscape become its own ecosystem because the, um, the plants really work together with the bugs and the soil. Um, so the way bugs, one of the way bugs contribute, um, they eat some of the plants, depending on what bugs you get in there, um, and they prevent them from getting too overgrown. So if you can see, um, this sedum is, has actually grown quite tall and I really need to trim it down myself. But um, if I had maybe some isopods in there, they would do a great job of keeping that uh, sedum population under control. It's also um, plant life, like leaves will fall off and they will start to decompose. Um, and one thing that bugs do a really good job of I do have some springtails in the bottom. I don't know if the camera is going to focus on them, um, but they do a really good job of turning decomposing plant life and even mold into, they eat it and they turn it into biological matter that the plants can actually use. Um, so that's how they contribute to the ecosystem. And when the bugs die, they become part of the soil and the the plants can use that as well. This terrarium, as you can see, um, I have it under a grow light, um, and it's just a full spectrum LED, basically. Um, and there's really no comparison for uh, to sunlight. Um, sunlight is really the best way to get your plants to grow, but I personally don't have a windowsill that's large enough for this particular terrarium. Um, so that's why I use a grow light for this one. But if you have space in your windowsill, like this one sits in my windowsill because it's small enough, um, I really would recommend that over a grow light. Just one more quick note about terrariums. Um, I have a cat and she loves to eat houseplants. So having your plants enclosed in a terrarium setting, say hi baby, <laughs> is that it's a way to have houseplants without your cat being able to get to them. So it's been about a week um, of this little terrarium sitting in the windowsill. Um, as you can see, there's some condensation um, in the side um, that faces the window. It's also quite warm from all of the sunlight, which is great. Um, but there's not condensation all over the glass, which is a really good sign that there's not too much water. Um, the clover perked up a lot. It was looking a little dry um, when I put it in. Um, so I think that's a really good sign that it's going to take root. Um, and really, honestly, I can probably keep this like it and keep it like this for months, um, with no maintenance. Um, if something looks like it's dried up and dying, I can take it out. Um, if I don't see any condensation in the glass, um, I'll probably, uh, spray in a little bit more water. But one of the benefits of terrariums is that they require very little care. Um, so this is, um, you know, if your parents won't let you get a pet, uh, this is um, a very low maintenance living thing that you can have in your house.